14 years ago this week, American exchange student Amanda Knox was convicted of murdering her British roommate, Meredith Kircher. She was sentenced to 26 years in prison. Her acquittal came four years later, after the cellmate of Rudy Gaudet, the first person convicted in Kircher's death, told authorities that Knox and her boyfriend, Raffaele Solecito, had nothing to do with it. Many of us watched live as she collapsed in that courtroom in Perugia, learning she would finally be free. All these years later, Knox is hoping to clear her name of the slander conviction still hanging over her for falsely accusing her boss, Patrick Lumumba, of the murder. Tonight, Amanda Knox goes on the record in an emotional interview you will see only here on King 5. She talks about the lies that put her behind bars, what it means to be a defendant again, and what she's learned since becoming a mother. I look back on 20-year-old Amanda fairly often because... Uh, in, in a lot of ways, we're exactly the same person, and in very, very big ways, we're not. Like, I was having the time of my life, and then completely out of the blue, the worst possible thing happened. Your instinct was to go to the police, to help them in any way that you could, because this roommate was not just a roommate, it was your friend. Yeah, thank and you so for saying that. And so that's what you that. did. Yeah, a lot of people forget that she was also my friend. Like, right. I mean, well, Meredith was at home when she was raped and murdered. And it, it was shocking. It shocked me so deeply to my core that I didn't really, at the very beginning, even know what to think or to do. So I just did what I was told. But so much of what really impacted this case happened within a few days prior to my arrest. And that was when the police were putting together their idea of what had happened in this case without any forensic evidence available to them. Unbeknownst to me, they were focusing in on me. I was the only person who had her cell phone tapped by the police. I was questioned for 53 hours over five days, way more than anyone else. But of course, I didn't know this. I think the thing that made me the most vulnerable and that makes any innocent person most vulnerable was that I assumed that my innocence was obvious. Walk us through what happened that ended up with you in jail, waiting for trial for a year, and then actually being convicted and in prison, all starting with you wanting to help the police and your yeah. interrogation. And as much as I told them that I had given them everything I possibly knew, they just wouldn't believe me, and it escalated, and they started lying to me. They told me that my boyfriend said I wasn't with him that night. They lied to me and told me that they had proof that I was at my house when I was actually at Raffaele's house. And it wasn't until this fake interpreter was brought in, who was actually a police officer, came in and told me a story. And she said, that's what happened to you, Amanda. You went through something so horrible that you don't even remember it. But here's the thing. We need you to remember what we know you need to remember right now, or you're never going to see your family again. When I didn't remember correctly, they would hit me in the back of the head. I believed them at a certain point that I must have amnesia, that I must be scared and broken because I felt scared and broken. And they got me to sign statements that implicated myself and others in a crime that we had nothing to do with, simply because they wanted to arrest someone as soon as possible. Based on what happened with you, why do you want to help others? You know, when I first came home, I didn't know how common wrongful convictions were. And it wasn't until I went to my first ever Innocence Network conference that I walked into a room full of hundreds of people who had been through the exact same experience as me. And they came up to me and told me that I didn't have to explain a thing to them because they already knew. Like the relief that swept over me in that moment was life-changing. And I wanted to share that relief with others. A lot of people, knowing what you have been through, would say, why? Why doesn't she just want to just close the door on that, put it behind her? You know, I have found that 
first of all, the best way to grapple with trauma, instead of to looking away from it, is to look directly at it. That I still have um, deep, deep trauma responses that arise from when I feel like authority figures are lying to me. Like that, I get a fear response when that happens. So I'm still processing my own trauma. But on top of that, I have found that by sharing my perspective about what happened, I am empowering other people to not find themselves in the situation I was in. And then layer on top of that, you're a mother now. Mm. And I'm wondering if that at all plays a role in your involvement in trying to change the future so that what happened to you can't happen to them. Absolutely. I mean, I had this incredible um, experience when my daughter was first born. I was afraid going up to giving birth to her of how the world was going to treat her um, because she was my daughter. The thing that really hit me though was what it must have felt like to be my mom going through everything that I was going through and how much my mom would have given to trade places with me at any point but she couldn't. And how many parents find themselves in that situation just utterly powerless to help their kids as they're going through the torture of the justice system. Let's talk about fully clearing your name. Yes. This slander yes. charge. While I am no longer a convict, <laughs> which is great, um, I'm back to being a defendant. And it's a little surreal to be back in that space again. Um, but I plan on pursuing justice to the fullest extent that I can. And I hope that ultimately I will be acquitted and really this whole thing could be put behind me. <laughs> will you go back to Florence where this is going to be tried again? Yes, I am prepared to stand up for myself in a court in Italy and to clear your name once and for all. Absolutely.